The government gets tough on electrical safety in council housing. A copper thief suffers an 11 kV shock and third degree burns. And a nationwide poll answers a question that's dogged the trade for decades. Just what is the electrical trade's favourite biscuit? Welcome to Electrical News Weekly, whether you're listening in the van, on site, down at the wholesale counter, or if you're an electrical designer and you've made it safely to your desk, wherever you are, I hope your week is off to a great start. I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, don't forget to listen out for the two words that I've been challenged to slip into today's show. Comment below or tag us on social media if you think you've spotted them. The government has announced that it's set to act on electrical safety in England's social housing. The move follows mounting pressure from campaigners who say standards in local authority and housing association properties don't match those in the private sector. The Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities is proposing compulsory checks on electrical installations every five years, as well as portable appliance testing on all electrical devices that are provided by social landlords as part of the tenancy. It's also floating the idea of mandatory checks on electrical installations for owner-occupier leasehold properties within social housing blocks every five years. Ministers say the ambitious plans could radically improve housing quality and ensure that it's safe and decent for everyone. Meanwhile, in Wales, the new Welsh regulations on electrical safety come into effect in December. These bring in new legal requirements for electrical safety checks as well as the installation of smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. There are important differences between the rules in England and Wales, so if you do installation work in Wales, we'd recommend you check a special webinar series on the topic from NAPIT. These free tutorials are presented by NAPIT's technical expert, Frank Bertie. I've popped the registration links in the show notes. The government regulations in both countries will of course provide a boost in work for approved electrical contractors who carry out installation and pat testing. However, we gain on the roundabouts but lose on the swings as this month the government is scrapping the £1,500 grant that it gives to those buying electric vehicles. It says the scheme has achieved its purpose of kickstarting the sale of electric vehicles and anyway electric drivers should save over £2,000 in running costs compared to pricey fossil fuel. One way EV owners can mitigate the loss of the grant is by renting their charge points to their neighbours. You could, for instance, let local drivers who don't have their own charger pay to use yours during the day when you've driven to work. And yes, there are apps for that, lots of them. They handle the matchmaking between electric vehicle owners just like a dating site. You set the rental price and the apps take care of bookings and payments. There are two we'd recommend checking out. CoCharger is aimed at homeowners with a charge point, while Monta does this and more, even allowing you to manage a full network of chargers all over the country. I've popped the links to both apps in the show notes. Plugging in isn't the only way to boost your batteries, however. How would you like to simply park your car over a wireless charger? That's the promise of companies such as US Tech from Ytricity. The charging pad on the ground uses what's called resonant induction to exchange power with a receiving coil attached on the underside of the car or van. There are no moving parts or physical connectors. It works with both low-slung sports cars, the type that Gary favours, as well as with the chunky SUVs that Gordon tools around in. Siemens has just given a big endorsement to Ytricity. It has ponied up £20 million to take a stake in the firm. And if you can't be doing with all that plugging in and parking over pads, how about a car that powers itself from the sun? A solar-powered car which can run for an astonishing seven months has just been unveiled in the Netherlands. According to the Autonomist website, the Lightyear Zero is capable of running for up to seven months without being plugged into a traditional charger. The curved solar panels are cleverly integrated into the bonnet and the roof, and these provide enough power alone for commutes of 44 miles or less. There's also a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, which combined with the PV panels gives the car a range of 388 miles. Wouldn't it be great if our solar system had two suns to charge from, but I guess the non-binary version we've got is actually pretty awesome. Now that range of 388 miles is enough to get you from London to Grimsby and back. Now why would you want to go there, you may ask? Well, to see the mighty Grimsby Town FC, of course. If you're a footy fan, you'll know that the Mariners have just won promotion to EFL League 2 in spectacular style, and things got even better this week with the news that they've just landed a big-name sponsor in the shape of My Energy. It's a completely natural fit. My Energy is, of course, best known for its zappy EV charges, and it has its UK manufacturing facilities in the heart of Grimsby. The company says it wants to put the town on the map as a national hub of renewable technology. 
A town that's been put on the map for all the wrong reasons is Camden Town in North London. The hipster hangout has been named as Britain's most expensive place for contractors to park. The local Camden Council charges the tidy sum of £41.39 for a trade permit to park during business hours. If you add in a 15 quid congestion charge, it means a full day's work of eight hours will cost you a princely £56.39. pence. According to Toolstation, 71% of tradespeople now think they should be given parking exemptions and emergency parking spots when out on an emergency job. Research also shows that 80% of tradespeople have had to raise their prices because of spiralling parking costs and the price of fuel. The cost of living is being blamed in part by a scaffolder who turned to crime during the pandemic. Damien Harris from Manchester suffered a massive electric shock and was set on fire when he tried to steal energised copper buzz bars in 2020. Harris was technically dead for two minutes after the incident and he has suffered life-changing third-degree burns. He now requires reconstructive surgery on his injuries. Harris hopes his experience will inspire others and is urging young people not to turn to crime in hard times. Young people appear to be increasingly turning to apprenticeships, according to a report from the ECA. The association says that a quarter of its members say they are hiring more apprentices than last year. Almost a third plan to directly employ more staff than in the past, showing the value of keeping qualified people in the business. Much of the extra work is being driven by the installation of renewables, such as photovoltaic panels, EV chargers and heat pumps. An example of these innovative new projects is a community ground source heat pump installation in Cornwall which broke ground this week. Householders in Carlion Bay and Harlin Bay will soon have their year-round heating and hot water provided by what's termed a shared loop ground array. This is an ultra-low temperature heat network used with ground source heat pumps. A series of boreholes are linked to create a shared ground loop array that provides heat to multiple properties. The company behind the project, Kensey Utilities, will retain ownership of the ground array and it will charge a fixed annual fee to householders for its use. If you're keen to get into heat pumps, the good news this week is that Viva Training has upgraded its established heat pump courses by switching to the British Plumbing Employers Council Heat Pump Systems Programme. This includes superior course material to ensure learners gain the information they need in an engaging and easy to digest format. This BPEC heat pump qualification covers both air source and ground source heat pump technology. Training in renewable technologies is crucial for the trade, says a new study. It found that no fewer than four out of five electrical contractors don't feel confident discussing sustainability with customers. Clients are increasingly asking for low carbon tech, says the report from Electrical Direct, and more than a fifth of electricians have been directly asked about their environmental impact. But there's a knowledge gap which needs addressing. A great place to start would be to check out some of our heat pump and PV panel installation videos. And again, I've put some links in the show notes. As regular viewers will know, we've also created a lot of videos on the subject of surge protection as we get a lot of questions about it. And the 18th edition is bringing in some changes to the requirements. Under the new rules, there are three scenarios where surge arresters must be fitted, where over voltage could result in serious injury or loss of human life, failure of a safety service or significant financial or data loss. But the regulations also state the owner of the property where the circuit is being installed can opt not to have protective devices included and accept any risk associated in all other cases. However, Paul Dawson, commercial director at Niglon, has got in touch to say that he believes most over voltage issues have the potential to result in injury or worse. He says most buildings will have people using them for at least a proportion of the time. Even storage facilities or data centres, he says, need to be checked by a person regularly. That means the risk to life is always there, should the surge occur when the building is in use. He recommends going above and beyond the regs and installing AFDDs as an extra layer of protection. And finally, for reasons best known to themselves, Toolstation has conducted a survey to find the electrical trade's favourite biscuit. While chocolate digestives are by far the most popular biscuit to accompany a cuppa for the whole population, that's not how the cookie crumbles for sparks, apparently. It turns out what we really like to dunk into our Yorkshire tea is a plain hobnob. This revelation has broken like a ginger snap across Lineside Studios. Gordon has long been a custard cream man. Joe Jr. likes a pink wafer. I enjoy a chocolate digestive, but it's got to be dark chocolate. If you think it should be milk chocolate, then quite frankly, you're a deviant. And my other presenting colleague, likes currants in his cautiously flavoursome tea time treats, is a huge fan of 19th century Italian generals, and, like me, is starting to go a bit thin on top. So we've taken to calling him Gary Baldy. No? Nothing? That works on so many levels. Is this thing on? 
No? Anyway, coming up this week on our YouTube channel, we'll be attending the Installer Show and we'll bring you our top picks from there. If you haven't already registered to attend, there's a link in the show notes and we're really looking forward to seeing you there. We've also got videos coming out on the RIOT from RF Solutions. The IOT there stands for Internet of Things, so maybe a bit of a leap into the metaverse there. An ingenious and unexpected new product from Marshall Tuflex, an awesome new consumer unit relocation kit from Whisker, and a Q&A on EV charge point installation in association with Zaptec on the regulation that was too controversial to stay in BS7671. So stay tuned for all of that. Last week's challenge words were tiara and discombobulate. Apparently Ray Maloney is just starting to hate me now. So if you spotted them in our newscast last week, congratulations, but nobody commented that they found both. And so special congratulations to the only person who said that they'd spotted discombobulate. That's Sergio Fernandez. So well done you. Click the get involved link in the show notes to get in touch and claim your prize. If you think you know the words we've smuggled into today's show, pop your guests into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening. And until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a taut calibrated arm.